If you've been using Autodesk Inventor for any time at all, then you've seen this border and title strip. It's the standard border and title strip that comes with Autodesk Inventor. And it works, but if you use it, your work will look like everybody else who hasn't taken the time to customize a border and title strip. In this video, I'll show you how to update your drawings with a custom border and title strip that matches your company standards. Creating a custom border and title strip is actually quite simple. What you'll want to do is launch Autodesk Inventor and begin by creating an empty drawing. Once you've done so, go over to the History Browser, delete the title block, and delete the sample border. Once you've done so, you're prepared to create your own border and title block. So what you'll want to do is to expand Drawing Resources here. And then where it says right on borders, you'll just want to right click on here and choose define new borders. When you do so, you get all your draw tools as if you're doing a regular sketch. Notice, however, that there are tiny points in the corners of each of the, uh, there are tiny points in each of the corners of the, of the paper. This is going to allow you to create a border that automatically adapts to the size of the paper. So I'll start off by drawing a rectangle, and then I'll dimension it. But I don't want to dimension the overall length. What I want to dimension is the distance from the border to the edge of the paper. So coming in here, I'll say, from this border line to the edge of the paper, I'm going to say 0.75. And then I'll make the other three borders the same way, 0.375. Point three seven five and point three seven five and what we get here is any any time we put this border in it will automatically conform to the size of the paper that we have <clears throat> without having to worry about whether or not the paper is going to be the right size when you're done you can choose finish and it gives you the opportunity to name your border I'll just call it plain border since it's not a zone border. When I choose save, you'll notice now that if I go to borders and expand this, you'll have the default border and then you have your plain border. To do the title block, you'll do the same thing. You'll right click on title block and you'll choose define new title block. This time it does not give you the points in the corners. You do not need to locate the border or the title block as, as in relation to the paper because when you insert the title block it gives you the option to specify where you want it to be, bottom right, top right, and so on. To save time I've already started most of the work and gotten it done here. So you'll see that I've got my title block here. <clears throat> I have some general notes about size and dimension. And then I have information such as the sheet size, the initial view scale, the vendor name, number, the title of the drawing, and so on. But what I need to do is show you just a few things. As we go in here and we look at it, some of the text will be always the same on all of these drawings. For example, the word size is always going to be there, but the sheet size may change. The word scale is always going to be there, but of course the scale will change. The title is going to change every single time. So the things that are going to change are fields, and they are shown by having, they're, they're in these brackets, the greater than and the less than sign. <clears throat> um, these, all of these that have those brackets around them are going to be information that are held in the I properties and automatically will be filled in by Inventor when you start your drawing. So over here, I just need to put drawn by, and then put the author name, and then checked by, put the checked name, and then up here we'll put the company name and the company address. The company address is special because there's no field for it. We're gonna have to create it on our own. So to put the text in, we'll come up here first of all, and I'll just say I want to use the regular text command here. And then I'll click about where I want that text to be. And this, for this small text, it's going to be a sixteenth of an inch in height, and it's going to say drawn by, drawn by, 
come by. And then we'll say, okay. And then I'll do the same thing right here for the checked by. Oh, didn't change the size, that's okay. All right, after I get those in there, it's a good idea always to make sure that you've got everything constrained. So I'm gonna make sure they line up with each other. And then I'll put a couple dimensions just to hold them in place. Now, in order to put the field in here, that's an autom that's a, a value that will be automatically looked up by the computer, by the program, you begin the same way. We go to the text command, and you can click wherever you want it to be. I'm gonna change my height, make it an eighth of an inch tall. And then right down here in type, you'll see that there's this option. It says standard eye properties. If we drop this down, you'll see that there are I, standard eye properties, drawing eye properties, sheet eye properties, and so on. So if I look at, you know, there, there are all these different options here. If I go over here to the property itself, under standard eye properties, there are several different, uh, probably two dozen or so different choices that I can make. And in this case, I want it to be the author, the person who's creating this drawing. Once I've chosen author here, you have to click the little X to add the parameter to the drawing. And you'll see that it adds it in here. And then I can choose OK. Then it brings it in and then I can simply do the same thing that I've done before and make sure that this is lined up with everything else and located so that it's not just floating around but it has a value that um, is fairly consistent with everything else that I've been doing. Same thing, same thing with checked by. So again, we come up here to the text tool. I will select about where I want my text to be, change my height if necessary, standard eye properties. This time I'm gonna find the one that says checked by and insert that. Okay, and then I can locate it as well. So in this time I can just say I want it to be lined up with this one and I want it to be lined up with this one. I don't have to put dimensions on it. For up here, if I want it to be the company name, it's still again the same process. So again, I'll go to my text tool up here. I will pick about where I want my text to be. The height again is going to be an eighth of an inch. I want it to be centered this time, so I'll say at the center and my standard eye properties, I'm coming, going to come down here and choose the file name and insert that. Oh, I'm sorry, that's, let me cancel that. I want the company name. So we'll start over again here, text about there, 0.125. So if I come in here, there's one for company. And I'll say, okay, insert that one. Ooh, I want it to be center justified. Okay. And so now I can put in my <clears throat> constraints so that this one is where it should be. And I'll add a dimension just to locate it where I want it. Now, the one that doesn't exist is this one called company um, address. So in order to add that one in, what you will do is go over to the file tab and come down and choose I properties. Once you've done so, you can come through and you can see these are all of the things that will be filled in that will automatically be translated over here to the border. So your title, of course, the author you can change, the company name would go here and so on. But in order to create one for the company address, we're going to choose the custom tab right here and I'm going to say company address and then say add. So you'll see that it's added it to a list down here. We can choose OK. 
And now when I'm ready to put it in over here, I can choose text, pick where I want it to go. Again, I'll change my height, change my justification. But no, no, now notice when I drop this one that says standard properties down, there's a new one here called custom properties. So I can choose custom properties and there it is. And I can say insert that one. And now I can finish this up by aligning this one, just like I've aligned the rest of them. So once you've got this done, okay, so I've got all my parameters, all my fields in place. It's the size I want it to be. All we have to do is choose finish and give it a name. And I'm just going to call it company border. You could always rename it later. So now when it's time for me to do a drawing, I can come in here and I can say, let's create a new border. Okay, so it's the plain border. And I will double click to install that one. Come on. There it is. And then when I want to put in my title block, I can expand that. And here's my company border. Now this is on a D size sheet. Notice, however, that if I come in here and right click on the sheet itself and choose edit the sheet, not only can I change the sheet size, but I can change the orientation and the location of the title block. It automatically updates because I told it how big the border should be in relation to the paper size.